I am Ruth Ann Thorne, and I've been an art dealer for more than two decades, working with artists from all over the world. I've always wondered, do artists create from within, or are they influenced by their surroundings? And why did they choose where they live? What do they get from their environment? If they were to live somewhere else, would their art be different? These are the questions we will answer as we explore cities across the country in Art of the City. I am Ruth Ann Thorne. I'm a tribal member here at Rincon Band of Luceno Indians. And today I'm gonna to bring you a special episode of Art of the City, which you'll see about how these tribes are supporting artists within Indian country and how they're bringing the traditions of the tribe into the public eye through art and culture. So join me for Art of the City, Indian Country. Southern California where I'm going to meet with one of the most important tribal leaders, Chairman Cody Martinez of the Sequan Band of the Kumeyaay Nation. We're very excited to see how Sequan has supported the arts and is continuing to bring art and culture into the tribe and also into public spaces so that everyone can learn about what it means to be Kumeyaay. Uh, my name is Cody Martinez, as you mentioned, and I'm the elected chairman of the Sequan Band of the Kumeyaay Nation. And 2020 will be the sixth year uh, that I've been in office. What is it like? I know you have two kind of two different roles. Sure. You have tribal government, where you're, you know, overseeing things for the actual people here, your people, the yeah. Kumeyaay Nation. But also, you have this whole other hat you have to wear, which is a business hat. Yes. What is that like? So as tribes have, have developed and l become a little bit more sophisticated, a number of tribes have developed uh, economic development uh, companies that are in charge of diversifying their business interests outside of gaming. So Quan, a little bit old school, the tribal council still retains day-to-day -day oversight of the management team for the casino. Wow. Uh, the casino resort is still our major economic engine. I think it will remain so for the foreseeable future. But uh, you built. remember what it was like when there was no resource pretty much i mean other than people going out getting a job outside um, there wasn't a lot on the reservations as far as opportunities before gaming um, you know the infrastructure was very poor a lot of trailers a lot of government housing uh, not a lot of opportunity not a lot of employment alcoholism drug abuse those things were there when you were a kid did you have an attachment to culture or had that been stripped away or what do you remember about learning about what it meant to be part of of being Native American, which is, you know, being Kumeyaay. Sure. The younger years, it's hard to remember specific cultural events. I think in the 80s and early 90s is probably the time that everybody can agree amongst all the communities where the culture was at a very low point. Right. Uh, the Kumeyaay Nation is, is, takes pride in their bird songs and their bird dancing on, on that side of it. And at one point there was, there was less than a handful of, of known singers. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, a, like I said, a, a low point. And since then, especially with the ability of gaming to be able to put on powwows and gatherings and put all the resources, um, the culture has definitely made a, a recovery. The first time I, I don't know, I realized, wow, um, you know, we were here from the beginning and then we've become an occupied sure. country. I mean, it, it, I don't know why you always kind of know that, but to really think about, think about immigrants, people immigrated to this country from all over, but we didn't. Right. And when you start thinking about that, what was your feeling about the culture and you identifying as a native Kumeyaay person? For me, the native history was, was very sad, learning about the plight of Native Americans and the lack of resources and just the, the constant generation. You know, my children's generation represents the sixth generation born since this reservation was created in 1875. One of the most important things for me is trying to not, to, to know your history, know the wrongs, and, and learn from it, but don't mm -hmm. dwell on it to where you feel like you're a victim. Yes. Because the Native American people are not victims. We talk about being survivors. Yes. And there's a, a great story that comes along with that, and people need to know that 
you got to build on those on um, those trials and tribulations that came before. I love that. Yeah. How did that come together with figuring out what are you going to show the world when they come to stay at the hotel within the art? So this was a major investment for us and probably the biggest investment we'll make in, in under my you know leadership. We had to take a serious approach to how we wanted to, to infuse cultural elements in the build. But I think the initial work that we've done brings brings subtle underpinnings of, of the Native American culture, which is which is natural. Native Americans are natural people of the earth. Right. And so you'll see in a lot of the guest rooms, you'll see imagery of oak trees, which was a staple of the acorn for the Kumeyaay and a lot of California Native tribes. Without the oak tree, they wouldn't have survived. And also a lot of visuals of uh, nature and landscape that are from around the reservation. Reflections on, on landscape and, and animals, uh, red tail hawk and others, that, that are important. Mm -hmm. uh, culturally to, to the Kumeyaay people. This piece is a perfect example of one of those paintings that was brought into this build here at Siquan that represents who the Kumeyaay people are. This is the landscape, the terrain, that was taken to an artist that brought in a modern rendition of the land that's been here, 14,000 years documented. So the tribe really took a lot of time and effort to think this through, and this is an example of one of those beautiful cultural pieces. that one of the big projects you're working on right now is one to honor these elders yes. that have, what are your thoughts? Because that could be really tricky. <laughs> no, it definitely is. So the reservation is made up of, of uh, about five or six large families and historically that's kind of been the case. Okay. And so we want to be able to represent uh, a lot of the you know, patriarchs or matriarchs of those families that have either been in leadership roles or been just great pillars of the community over mm. time. Yeah. You folks are so much about pouring back into the community, mm. pouring back into the arts, and then casinos are not just about employing folks, but you're bringing in some very big acts. We opened here with Macklemore on our on our opening, and we've had you know Tony Bennett, others you know come in, and we've been able to put on a, on a great show. The gaming business is an entertainment business, and to us, we have to be able to have not just the best and newest machines, but great customer service, great food, great entertainment. Uh, even if you're not a gamer, you've got to be able to come and have a great time. <laughs> The U.S. grant is a, is a long story, but a very proud story of, of the nation to be able to. So a little historical connection is the, the hotel was built in 1910 by the son of the former president, Ulysses S. Grant, the Civil War general. Um, and Ulysses S. Grant, the president, was the president who signed the executive order in 1875, creating, I believe, nine or 11 reservations in Southern California at the time, and Saquon was one of them. The infusion of the culture in that property also, I think, was done in a very uh, subtle but elegant way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think some of the things we were able to do down there as we continue to, you know, the property's historic, so a lot of things are going to stay, you know, timeless and elegant, the marble, the chandeliers, mm -hmm. and I think the way we can utilize finishes and still infuse the culture and do it in a tasteful way. I noticed that you have these absolutely gorgeous bronze sculptures. Yes of Kumeyaay, mm -hmm. um, and then I love the way that you pay tribute again to the leaders, you know, all of the, um, the former chairs, yes, including kind of, yourself, yes. which, you know. No, definitely, that, that was great to be able to see um, the, the, the drawings, representation of the, the headshots of, again, you're talking over 80 years of tribal leadership on that wall. This incredible sculpture greets you as you're coming into the U.S. Grant. It's a bronze sculpture of a Kumeyaay maiden and probably one of the most incredible sculptures I've seen in Indian country to date. So this is again one of those beautiful masterpieces that Saquon Band of the Kumeyaay Nation has taken their resources, supported Native artists, and brought in things so that the public can be exposed to their history and their culture, and also to just 
give such a beautiful centerpiece as people come in. We had been conditioned for so many years mm -hmm. to, you know, not become too public. But it's so beautiful now to see the arts and the culture being pushed forward because now we're proud. I've been told, you know, we need to focus on community and culture just as much as business, and I understand that completely. But without the business and the <laughs> revenues, yes. you wouldn't be able to do a lot of these things are definitely not the way we want to do mm -hmm. them. Um, so I think we could continue to build on it. Um, I just want to be able to build a more progressive community. Art has always been an important part of what it means to be Native American. But as you can see here, the tribes have not forgotten that. You can see that the tribes that have been shown here today, although very prosperous, are pouring back into art and culture in such a unique way. And I think that the significance of art really shows that we're still here as a people. We still remain, our stories are still being told, and it really gives everybody an opportunity to understand what it means for us as Native Americans to be progressive within the culture that we're living in today. So I hope you enjoyed Art of the City, Indian Country, and I hope you join us again.